15 uses of calcium oxides hydroxides magnesium oxides and hydroxides this is more of a recall question magnesium hydroxide used as a refractory lining and calcium hydroxides will be what we use to raise the pH of acidic soil Sixteen, largest change in oxidation number of sulfur so the sulfur numbers I put them here they want the largest change in each of the reactions so there's no change in reaction 1 so it's 0 reaction 2 the largest change is actually from plus 6 to plus 4 so there's a decrease of 2 reaction 3 plus 6 has dropped to minus 2 so change in 8 units so that's the largest change for your sulfur Seventeen. Which one explains why magnesium hydroxide dissolves in ammonium chloride? Okay, what's so special about ammonium chloride that is not there in sodium chloride? Ammonium and it's four plus. It, when it dissolves, actually there is a chance that it will give out hydrogen ions, protons. In other words, there's a chance that it will cause the solution to be acidic. Right, for sodium, we do not have the H plus donated by sodium. So, ammonium chloride, a solution is actually acidic. It will actually dissolve your magnesium hydroxide, which is a base. So, NH4 plus ions can donate a proton. Eighteen uses of transition metals again this one is another recall question vanadium 5 oxide is used as catalyst in the contact process iron is used as the catalyst in the cable process 19 three consecutive elements in the third period y has the highest first ie and the lowest melting point I will use melting point to compare and then see whether we can get the answer if not we have to consider the first IE also so Y has the lowest melting point we will look at all this second substance which will be Y magnesium for option A sodium will be the one that has a lower melting point than magnesium because there's less number of delocalized electrons in the metallic bonding so okay, this is the lowest melting point low MP so this is out aluminium is not the lowest melting point of all the lowest melting point of all is magnesium same thing it can donate two electrons to the C aluminium donates three so lowest melting point is magnesium silicon it's not really metallic bonding it is giant covalent so it's actually the highest among all three aluminium silicon silicon like i say is giant covalent this is the highest the lowest is actually phosphorus which is simple covalent so d will be answer giant covalent very high melting point actually the highest among all in period 3 phosphorus it's actually P4 sulfur S8 molecule and because it's S8 it actually has a larger MR or larger number of electrons it will have a stronger intermolecular attraction compared to phosphorus 4 so P4 has a lowest MP Right, so just by looking at the melting point alone we can see that D is the answer if it doesn't work out you just have to use the first ionization energy 
you actually have to remember the general trend okay generally it's increasing but there will be slight deviations from magnesium to aluminium and then phosphorus to sulfur in this case phosphorus has higher ionization energy among all three also Twenty. Preparing your ester. What process is involved at some stage? So, if you look at the, some of the description, we have your ethanol, and they take away hydrogen atoms. So, it is actually oxidation, removal of hydrogen, oxidation. Here we have our aldehyde, and then we have our alcohol. Right, your aldehyde drawn down here your alcohol the ethanol in this case what happens is there is a lone pair right, it will undergo it will act as a nucleophile and this one is a partial positive carbon ki or partial positive carbon so one of the H, you can visualize that the H will go here and then the rest of the molecule will be attached here right? something like your adding of your HCN one of the H goes here the CN will go to the other side and then we have our esters so this is a nucleophilic addition reaction that will give us this substance here and then removing hydrogen again for the next stage is also oxidation so the process that must be involved in some stage will be your nucleophilic addition reaction which reaction gives the best yield of one chloropropane so draw the structure right all these are hydrogen uh, i'll leave it out for now so we want this structure we look at some options chlorine gas with propene gas in the duct well if you have chlorine gas and propene propene is double bond what will happen is we will have chlorine added across a double bond we only want one chlorine here so this is out b your sodium chloride your chlorides in your aqueous solution won't re really replace the OH here so this is also out C is the answer proper one all and your PCL5 it will actually your CL5 will replace your hydroxyl group here so C will be giving us the best yield of one chloropropane Twenty-two. What will happen when this structure is oxidized using hot acidic K two Cr two O seven? Now K two Cr two O seven is not strong enough to cleave the double bond unless they are saying they are using KMnO four. So what will happen is actually they will oxidize your alcohol. At this point to become an acid COOH if if they were to use KMnO4 okay, to extend the idea then you will have breaking of the bonds double bonds here this one will become your acid group COOH and here Will also become acid CH2 CH2OH here but this alcohol will also become an acid so if it was using KMnO4 acidified hot you will actually get D so be careful of what reactants they are using in this case Twenty-three. Which compound exhibits stereoisomerisms? 
so we are checking for whether we have chiral carbons so drawing out the structures look for carbons that are joined to four different groups okay this carbon if you're not sure how to look at the condensed formula okay you have to practice a bit or you can draw out the structure this carbon is joined to two ch3 groups so it can't be chiral this carbon cannot be right but this carbon there are actually four different groups one hydrogen two a chlorine three and this group four okay. again if you can't visualize this you draw out the structure maybe you can easier to see that this is your chiral carbon with four different groups so b is the answer right this carbon out this carbon has two chlorines joined to it and two methyl group joined to it definitely out okay and d if you draw the structure just to be safe ch2 cl ch2 ch2 cl okay, you realize that none of them have four different groups joined to it two hydrogen two hydrogen two hydrogen so definitely it's b